Hello and welcome to the Medical Sales Podcast and I am your host, Samuel. In this podcast, I interview top medical sales reps and leading medical sales executives across the entire country. And it doesn't matter what medical sales industry, from medical device to pharmaceutical to genetic testing to diagnostic lab, you name it, you will learn how to either break into the industry, be a top 5% performer within your role in sales, or climb the corporate ladder. Welcome to the Medical Sales Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Medical Sales Podcast. I am your host, Samuel, and today we have part two with Dorian Jordan. You know, part one was fascinating, right? I mean, he has, he's had so many colorful experiences in his medical sales career. We're going to dig a little deeper into part two. And of course, I'm not going to spoil it. You're going to have to listen to the episode. Again, if you're someone that's breaking in, this is a must listen. Someone that's already in the industry, you definitely want to hear it. And someone that's leading the way, they are pearls of wisdom to share. So as always, thank you for listening to the Medical Sales Podcast. And I really do hope you enjoy part two with Dorian Jordan. Yeah, so so the interesting thing about the, the, that Baxter experience after close to four years, right, is, you know, I, I, we, we, we break this ground, we, we, we accomplish a lot of things, um, have some ups and downs with the diversity and inclusion conversation, right? And then, you know, out of nowhere, I, I have another company and my current company comes knocking on the door. They, they make me an offer I can't refuse and then I leave. But then, yeah. but, but then Baxter looks at it like, oh man, like we're doing that bad of a job and now, you know, now the person that we're counting on is bounced, we got to do better, you know? And so I remember when a former colleague said like, that's what everybody thinks. And my response to them was like, good. Had right. nothing to do with it. Nothing right. to do with it. But I'm like, right. well, let them think that because that might create a positive change. And so, wow. and so, and so that leads me to my, my current role and kind of my current mentality and, and why I'm even here, right, is to, sure. is is I'm in a space now to where anything that's helped benefit me and my career and help me, I don't want to keep it to my chest anymore and keep my trade right. secrets hidden. I'd rather yeah. help other people grow and navigate things and be honest, and open and have candid conversations. like this. I love it. I love it. You know, and, and that's and I'm so glad you said that because I was going to ask you, you know, I'm sure you were really uh, excited to get into that role at Baxter where you're you're getting to be the voice of of an underrepresented group, especially with all the turmoil that was going on around what happened with George Floyd, the murder of George Floyd. So, you know, when you left, what did you do to kind of channel all that energy that I'm sure was building up that you were like ready to just let loose? You know, what did you take that to? Well, it's it's funny, right? Because where there's excitement that you're finally told that your voice matters and you're given a platform to make a difference. You also have like the other things that a lot of us navigate as people of color, like people are saying, well, I, you know, I, I'm not racist, you know, like, why are you trying to make me feel bad? You know? <laughs> and so, and so I, and I'm not saying that's how they sound. I know that's just a little voice I do, but anyway, <laughs> but, but the, you know, I, there was moments where I sat there and like, man, it would probably be good if I just went back to being a regular black person for free. <laughs> 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 because, <laughs> because it's just so like, you know, like complex trying to like, you know, make a point, but then make people feel better, you know, like, you know, but, but it's not really your job because you haven't even been in their life this whole time. But mm -hmm. how I channeled that is, I think another thing that was is the organization I went to has a huge authentic focus on inclusiveness and equity and diversity, yeah. right? And so yeah. we, and, it, and it's so much so that it didn't take long. I've been with this organization for a little bit less than two years. And within one year, I had already landed myself on another position and took on a role, two different roles. One of them was That's based awesome. on philanthropy. And then yeah. the other one is based off of um, a group that's, you know, for, for, for people of color, but it's not just awesome. like, you've got to be black to be in this group. We've got people from all different backgrounds and ethnicity right. on this field, because, because there's a lot of people that like these resource groups, right. That, that maybe they want to fill the gaps. They want to be better themselves. Right. And right. they haven't had these experiences or they're in a state where they don't have diversity. Right. And so we welcome those folks in with open arms as well. And so, so, th so, so just like I said earlier, being able to have not just that platform, but then even make it more constructive and more impactful 
that's that's awesome and I, and I and I land at an organization that really takes that wholeheartedly and so it's great and so that's kind of what I'm doing with it now and it's a you know be sitting on as a chairperson now and and in my particular focus is professional development um mm-hmm. so it's great I got people that that call me and they're like I'm, I want to go for this position and I'm going to interview um you know w- tell me about your preparation what you're doing so so outside of what my regular job is like that kind mm-hmm. of stuff is what 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 keeps me going and, and really gets me excited that is awesome that is awesome you know you've had such varied experience dorian i'd love for you to share think about the audience members now that are trying to that are listening because they want to get into uh into the medical into a medical sales role what would you you know thirty thousand foot view of course what's mm-hmm. like one or two points you'd share with them that they need to be mindful of as they consider making that transition sure so i say first and foremost is that you have to be willing to understand that none of these jobs come with zero sacrifice. There's always something. And that's the nature of what makes our sales jobs different than others. Right. I mean, when, and when you really, you know, just take a double click on that, think about it that way. Like, like I have a job where if it goes incorrectly, that patient could die. Mm-hmm. And so doesn't mean that it's your fault, right? Because you're, we're not scrubbed in, we're not wearing the gloves. But if I don't teach these folks how to use the equipment the right way, if I don't teach these folks and let them know that they have the options that they need, that is a significantly important role to have, right? And so you have to understand that your sacrifices, you know, certain jobs, certain careers, you can actually have a bad day, right? And be off your game. And then maybe somebody else can pick you up or maybe it's not as impacting. And so you have to understand whether you're in orthopedics, biologics, pharmaceuticals, right? You have to understand that sense of responsibility and sacrifice that you got to make. And so for some people that sacrifice is flexibility. For some people that's, you know, what their stress level is, right? Um, some people, you know, if, if you think you, you know, you love to be in the gym every single day, six days a week or whatever, and yeah, yeah you may not get that amount of flexibility or you better get used to working out in the middle of the night or early in the morning. And mm-hmm. so, and so, so there's always going to be some sacrifice. So that's the first thing, right? The second thing is just, I would say, understand that if you have an idea that you think we are a certain way, like, like, a, like a medical device rep has a certain personality or a certain look or whatever, you need to throw that away because mm-hmm. the best of us, you know, and, and I, you know, not as an arrogant thing, but I've done very well in this industry. 16 years and maybe two years I've missed plan over four different companies. So obviously I have a formula that works, right? And so outside of me, I there's not a lot of people that A, look like or carry themselves exactly the way I do because I've figured it out, right? And so you need to, and, and what is the basis and the foundation of that is I have made a focus of bringing my authentic self to, to the actual job. I know right. reps that have been in this business for years and you would never know that they were married or had kids or what they're interested in and what they like. You know, even with my own company, as you can see, I'm in my office right now. I'm a big <laughs> sneaker head. I'm into art, right? Like, so right. so I don't have a, a pre-done Zoom background because mm-hmm. I don't care what people think about me to the, st- mm-hmm. to the extent of, I want you, you know, uh, uh, what's that old kind of like a hip hop saying, right? Like. I would rather be um, um, I would rather be hated for who I am than love for than for who I'm not, right? So mm-hmm. that's what I bring to the business, right? Mm-hmm. And so and so so understand that if you really want to be effective, you better be yourself. Don't be someone that you think you need to be. I don't walk up in the OR like, hey, how's it going? You know, did you golf this weekend? I don't know anything about golf. Like, so I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't fake like that. I'm not, you know, like sure. people want it's just. We, we're in a world right now, right? Where mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. is like, you know, attention spans are short. There's a lot of fake stuff. Like you go on Instagram and you're like, damn, that person's really rich. And then you see him at the bus stop, right? Mm-hmm. So, and so, and so, so the least you can do is bring yourself and be real. And then when people mm-hmm. want to deal with real people in business, you know, and, and it works. So just be mm-hmm. yourself, it's, you know, and it right. should be easy. But mm-hmm. for whatever reason, some people struggle with it. So I would say that that's the second thing. And these are obviously in no particular order. For some people, that might right. be the most important thing, right? No, and that's, then that's the, good stuff. And then I would say the third thing is be patient. 
we have a lot of people, you know, you got to understand, like, I, I was 27 years old when I got into this industry, right? And I was treated like a child, like, mm-hmm. you know, like I was wet behind your ear. You're just a baby. Well, mm-hmm. fast forward 16 years or whatever. Now, now we've got people that are like right out of college coming in here, 22, 23 years old, walking into a hospital probably for the first time since they, you know, exited a hospital as a baby. Right. And so, so, so it's, it's fascinating to see, but with the, with the different generations, you know, you've got certain people that have, I, you know, I, entitlements or feel like, well, I did this. I've been an associate for one year. I should have a territory mm-hmm. by now. Mm-hmm. Make a territory for me. Like, mm-hmm. I, it's fascinating. Like some of the younger generation is like, I, I, I give them credit. Like they know what they want. And I think that's a beautiful right. thing, but it right. has to come with patience. And so I say that that's the third thing is just having patience. And, and for me to have this run that I've had in this, this career, remember what I told you started off just running equipment now mm-hmm. again at enterprise rent a car have 40 people directly reporting to me sure one accolades and had these plaques and medals and stuff from the things i accomplished there but i was an uber each driver of medical devices when i got into this industry because mm-hmm. i understood it was about where i was going to end up not where mm-hmm. i was in that moment and so i just had mm-hmm. to get the foot in the door right and so that patience you know that patience with the the hillbilly guy i had to work with right who mm-hmm. who, need, who needed me to do 90 percent of the work but then when i was trying to get promoted he's not ready um i'm 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 ready to run 90 percent of your five million dollar business but then i'm not ready to go take on a like like you know come on i had to be patient <laughs> and so mm-hmm. and so and so now i don't have to be as patient because now i get to make the decisions for myself you know, yeah, and so yeah. so you can get to where you need to, but just be patient. So those are the three things I think have helped me. Got it. No, I, thank you for that, Dorian. That's good. Um, I hope I hope people are taking notes. Um, OK, then, you know, let me ask you this. So you, know, you brought up how you are authentic and you have other things going on. So let's talk about what life looks like outside of medical sales. You sure. know, how do you organize your time? What are you into that keeps you sharp, keeps you focused and allows you to just give it your best every day? Yeah, I, I would say so. It's funny. Um, my my hero in life and and the person that I, you know I admire the most is is Kobe Bryant. You know, technically only a few months older than me. You know, you know, rest in peace. Obviously, had a, tre- a tremendous effect on the city of Los Angeles in general. Um, and then I grew up in Indiana, so I'm always been a basketball guy. Anyway, played basketball when I was in high school as well. And so and so the one thing that he teaches is the Mamba mentality, right? And it's just a simple idea of you got to be the best version of yourself every day with some intention, right? And so a lot of, as I've, you know, become more emotionally mature and grown up and become the man that I am, a lot of it centers around that. And so, so in my real life, it's two things. Like I'm highly organized at work, but I'm not big on expectations in my real life. I don't like to sit there and say, I got to do this. And then if it doesn't happen, then I'm ruined, right? Like, so so if you're talking to me on Tuesday, what do you got going on this weekend? I might be like, I don't know, you know, mm-hmm. but then I'll figure it out, you know? And, mm-hmm. and, and I think living like that is awesome. Like, you know, last weekend, I didn't know what I was going to do and end up at the Dodgers game, watch Clayton Kershaw throw 10 strikeouts and they beat the Cubs, which most of the people I'm from back home love the Cubs. So I was like, hell yeah, you know, you got to deal with it. Um, you know, I might go on social and talk a little trash, you know, <laughs> but, um, but, um, but the things like I keep things like less is more. And so I, I, I enjoy and me and my wife like to go get good food. I am a vegan. So you know, hopefully the, the, the people out there don't hold that against me. But I, I don't eat anything with eyeballs, <laughs> so so I try to take care of myself that way. Um, I stay in shape because you know I may not be as athletic from when I was all Big Twelve, you know, competing for the University of Kansas. But I still, you know, I, I like that. You know, a couple of years back, I did a workout with my sons, and they're like, "Jesus, he still got it," you know. <laughs> and, and so and so so I try to take care of myself that way. Um, yeah. As you can tell by the sneaker bins in the background really I, I still care about like how i dress and stuff like so i still like spend i'm not i'm not afraid to spend money on like the, the hot shoes and like the, the good clothing sure, brands sure. and stuff like that i right. have my drip right you know and and so so i definitely 
you know, do that. And, and that's it. Like, I just try to, you know, and my wife is into some of the same things that I am. My wife's a medical device rep as well. And so, yeah. so, so it is for between both of our schedules, it is hard to say, we're going to do this at this time. Um, right. And so, but, but to alleviate the stress with that, yeah, just kind of keep it open, you know, and just, and just, cool. and just keep the things that are important. And obviously my sons are, you know, young men at this point right and so i also spend a lot of time making sure that they're always good and one in one in college and one almost done with high school so that is very cool look at you, you got it all, all all worked out um how long you've been a vegan for uh so it's about close to five years you know and i, and I would wow. say i'm like a cool vegan right like i'm not running into a restaurant like hey can you change the spatula did that touch that like no i'm not i'm not on that <laughs> kind of deal and if i and i don't sit there and do a surgeon dinner and make them go to a vegan restaurant or whatever i just if i got yeah. to talk to somebody and figure it out and if there's nothing else like i will check down like you know if, I, if there's yeah. nothing else and i gotta eat like some sea bass or something i will do it so maybe okay, so nine you, so you're uh, so you yeah, eat meat few, sometimes you are far between but but i'm not sure. scared of it like i don't have gotcha. it, it's it, for me it's clearly just a choice like i don't yeah um but i do like the benefits right like i like the, cool. the impact on the environment i i think it's cool like i i have a rescue dog so it, it hits you different when you have a rescue dog like you know right you know like you know like, i care about animals a little bit you know and so but i understand you got to be realistic right and you know half those shoes right there are made out of leather right so i'm not you know i don't want to be hypocritical either <laughs> sure, sure how many how many shoes do you actually have back there uh so that is that, that's what is that rows of 12 four rows of 12 so that's like 48 pairs of a couple stacked up there too and i think overall pairs. well overall i think i have like uh, i think I, I sold some so i, I think i'm at 200 pairs like i got a storage 200 like pairs that. Yeah, man, see, if, if that's, that's not a hobby, right there. That's a wow, color, you, know, like, you don't so play around. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, then. Well, you, like, you know, that's an investment. You have a, you do have an actual collection. I've, I've heard of, you know, people being sneakerheads, but I don't think I've actually met one. So this is, this is fascinating. Yeah. That's fascinating. Uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't say it earlier, but I grew up poor. And so I, I couldn't afford the stuff and all the other kids had that, you know, so so when I got a little bit of money, I'm like, you know, like, you're like, OK, I know where to know. put it. <laughs> it's, it's not it's not it's not when you do it. <laughs> that is great. That is I'll, great. I'll get there eventually, you know, <laughs> hilarious. All right, Dorian. Well, you know what? I want to I want to before we come to a close, I have some questions I want to ask you. Uh, we, we're doing this now with our guests on, on towards the end of the show. And I'm going to ask you four questions and you got to give me an answer within the next, you know, five, 10 seconds. And so you can't think okay. of it too long. You got to give me what comes to mind immediately. All right. Sure. All right. All right. First, first question. Best book you've read in the last six months. Um, the Nipsey Hustle book. I don't even remember what the title. But, Nipsey, but. shame on me. I didn't even know he had a book. What's oh, you don't know the, the name of the, the title? Marathon, it's like the, the Marathon Never Stops or something like that. I can't remember the name of the title. It's like right under. Oh, that's field. interesting. What what was yeah. great about it? Oh, uh, just like Nipsey Hussle was great. Like you know, yeah. like, I get it. He was a rapper, or whatever. He's been very important to this town in L.A. But right. I had the opportunity to meet him back when I lived in Vegas. He did a performance, and oh, wow. I just love that he was one of those guys kind of like myself that just wasn't going to just settle for whatever the streets were offering. And he kind of went back to that area of, of like, you know, Crenshaw, right. And, right. and invested in that community and, and this, you know, created the story, created jobs and opportunities. And I, I, it's just, it's, it's amazing that and he was just leaps and bounds ahead of the game. So smart, definitely lost you know, way too soon. It makes no sense, completely senseless. Yeah. And it's, you know, you, you think about your parents and people like that, they talk about like, I remember where I was when I found out that he was murdered. Yeah. Wow, Cause yeah. that's how impactful he was. And so I got the, he had a, um, a guy that used to write articles for, I, th I think Vibe magazine um, had followed him and did some interviews. And so he released all that stuff and did, wow. did his biography basically. So it's really good. That's the last one I read. Wow. That's good. I'll have, to, I'll have to check that out. Okay. Best movie in the last six months. Best movie in the last six months for me is, um, it's called Everything, Everywhere, at the same time or something like that. It's like Michelle Yeoh. It's like a where metaverse you, type of movie. Where do you find this movie? Um, it, well, it's like on, it, it was in theaters, right? And oh, okay. then it came, and then I think you can get it on like Apple Plus or maybe Amazon. It's oh, very wow. good. Very, really? very good. Well, yeah. what, well, I mean, don't give it away, but what, what's, what's the intrigue? 
Well, so, you know, there's like the Doctor, if you're into Marvel stuff, there's a Doctor Strange movie, right? Where they're talking about like different layers of the world and the universe, yeah. right? And yeah. so this is a, an Asian lady who has in, in certain lives, she's a movie star in other lives and she's working at a laundromat and they just oh, wow. fluctuate super cinematography, a great story, great writing. It's oh, very, wow. very good, you know, and okay. we watch you know, a fair amount of movies, but yeah, uh, it's it's everything everywhere at the same time or something is so good. And Michelle Yeoh is the woman that played the mom in Crazy Rich Asians and right, um, right. she was in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, way back in the day. So she's a well accomplished actress, you know, or actor. That so. is cool. Look at you. Okay, yeah. we'll we'll have to note that. And then uh, uh best ex- best meal in the last six months. Um best meal last six months. Ironically, was not a vegan meal and it was last actually no i take that back the the best meal that i had was going to be there's a place called nick's in beverly and it is a vegan like a high-end vegan spot in beverly hills okay and they have a vegan pizza there that you would never know that is uh, that's vegan it's so good and so but they have a variety of other things they take like some um they took like almost like an au gratin potato. They make it into a loaf and cut it into French fry shapes and then bake it uh-huh. and fry it again. It's like eating a fry that has mashed potatoes and it's so good. Like they do oh, all wow. these creative things. It's out in Beverly Hills. It's so good. Best meal. Well, it's order Nick's a bunch of on Beverly. Things. Nick's like N-I-C apostrophe S on Beverly. Yeah. All right. So then we'll have to check that one out too. All right. And then lastly, best experience you've had in the last six months. Best experience I had in the last six months, that's easy for me. Um, on Father's Day slash Juneteenth, I had my youngest son in town who's 16. And then he's supposed to be here for the whole summer. Uh, and he got a job at Sonic. And so so I ain't trying to keep him from his money. And, hey, so, okay. and so, so, so he came out for one week. And he's been doing well working like 40. He's got the same work ethic as me. He's working 40, 45 hours and That's even doing awesome. his finals in high school. And I'm like, wow. man, you're crazy, but good for you, bro. And he got A's on yeah. all his finals. Yeah. But he, um, he, he comes up here. My wife sets up a dinner at this vegan restaurant in Long Beach. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's a $150 dinner for the three of us. And then my son pulls out his debit card and he's just like, oh, come on. Face. Split the bill with my wife, man. It almost made me cry, man. Because I was just like, oh, that's like, beautiful. Like, that greatest Father's Day gift ever. Yeah. I'm not saying that, like I'm trying to sound broke or something, but it was right. Just like, no, but I like, mean to like, see like your son kid. do that. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have to. You know. What yeah. I mean? and so, and so, so that was that was awesome. That was the best. That is ever. awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Dorian, it was fantastic having you as a guest today. I know our audience learned a lot, especially those trying to enter the industry. Is there any last words you'd like to share with, uh, with our audience today? Uh, I'll say just, um, yeah, I, I think what I always tell everybody is the best way to live is to, to, to be, you know, respect the past, be where you are, like where your feet are right now. So just be mindful, be present, right? And be optimistic about the future. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Great seeing you, Dorian. We can't wait to see more things coming from you. Good having Absolutely. you on the show. Absolutely. Right. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Definitely. And that was Dorian Jordan with part two. I like the way he wrapped that up. Those are messages to truly honor and implement into your daily practices. Now, if you're someone that's been listening to this episode, you heard part one and now you've heard part two, you've heard his complete story. And medical sales is something you've always been thinking about. Maybe you wanted to enter pharmaceutical sales, or maybe it's been medical device sales, or you've heard about capital equipment, or even medical supply sales. Or maybe you just don't know which field you actually want to be in, but you know you want to be in some type of sales role that involves medicine. Well, visit EvolveYourSuccess.com, select Attain a Medical Sales Role, give us a little bit of information, and have a conversation with us so that we can help you get into the right position within medical sales and give you the career you've been dreaming about. Or maybe you're someone that's been in the field. Uh, You're in medical supplies, or you're in medical device sales, or you're even in pharma, and you want to level up. You really want to step your game up. There are five months left in this year. Everyone in medical sales knows that your entire world can change within five months. Why leave it to chance? Why do the same thing over again? 
take a different action, visit EvolverSuccess.com, select Improve Sales Performance, give a little bit of information, and have a conversation with us here at Evolver Success, and let's get you to win a circle, or let's get you that promotion, or let's get you that role that you've been dreaming about. Here at Evolver Success, we're changing careers, we're changing lives. This is what we believe in, and we believe it happens in the medical sales space. We do our best to bring you guests that give you insight, perspective, and resources to make your life better so that in this space, you're continuing to help that end consumer, which of course is the patient. As always, thank you for listening to the Medical Sales Podcast, and make sure you tune in next week for another episode. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And remember, I have a couple programs that show you exactly how to break into the medical sales industry, become a top performing medical sales professional, and also how to masterfully navigate your career to executive level leadership. Check out these programs and learn more at EvolveYourSuccess.com. Stay tuned for more awesome content with amazing interviews.